Number 61. What is the limiting reactant in a reaction that produces sodium chloride from 8 grams of sodium and 8 grams of diatomic chlorine? Okay, so in this case, we just have to find out which one of these compounds or elements, molecules, right, is the limiting reactant. Now, in order to find a limiting reactant, the first thing we need is a balanced equation. We don't have a, an equation here, so we have to find one out. So we've done tons of problems figuring out how to write a balanced equation. So this one will kind of be like a little, you know, uh, quickened, right? So you can pause the video and try to make your own equation and see if it matches mine. Now, it tells us that we're producing sodium chloride, right? So I know that whatever my reactants are going to be, I'm going to produce sodium chloride, which is NaCl. And my reactants is sodium. Sodium is a single element, right? It's a free element, so it's just Na. And then plus diatomic chlorine. They gave me a little hint here, but chlorine is always a diatomic by itself. So we have Na plus Cl2 yields NaCl. Now we just got to balance it, right? There's two chlorines. So I'm just going to put a two in front of here. That gives me two sodiums, so I have to put a two here. Now we have a balanced equation. Okay. Now, if we need to know what a limiting reactant is, the first thing that will, you know, make it a little bit easier for you if this is like a multiple choice question, remember, a reactant is always the starting material, okay? So you only got two choices here. The limiting reactant is going to be either sodium or it's going to be Cl2. It's never the products, okay? Now, a limiting reactant is one of the reactants that gets used up completely in the reaction. Now, in order to find out, you know, who it is, whether it's sodium or whether it's chlorine, I like to write out a little thing here. I, I like to write out that I have, and then I say what I need. Okay, so we're going to basically split this equation down the middle, and maybe we'll do that. Okay, now, what do we have? Well... They told us, and maybe I'll just put a plus here, okay. So they tell us that we have 8 grams of sodium, so I have 8 grams of sodium, and I have 8 grams of the chlorine. Okay, now I just need to know what I actually need in order for this reaction to run. And this is where the stoichiometry comes into play. What you're going to do is you're going to take one of these, I don't care which one, all right, I don't care if we start with sodium or if we start with the chlorine, but you're going to use your stoichiometry which we've done tons of problems, right, already, and go from one of them to the other. So you're going from one reactant to the other reactant. So I'm just going to bring this up, and I'm just going to, you know, make it so that it's our own. Let's say that I'm going to start with the sodium. So I'm going to say that, okay, I'm going to start with Na, right, and I have 8 grams. I want to know, if I use all of those 8 grams up, I want to know what I need of the chlorine. So you're going from sodium to the chlorine. And then along the way, you know, this is, we're going to find out the moles of the sodium. And then from there, we can convert over using the balance equation, right? Okay. So let's start it out. And let me actually get rid of this. Okay. So always start with what you're given. I'm going to use the, the grams of the sodium right? And maybe I will color code it. Okay. So multiply by a ratio, right? You put the grams on the bottom, grams of sodium go on the bottom because you want to cancel them out and moles of sodium go on the top. We've done tons of problems like this, right? So if you guys need like a refresher, go back. There's tons of these. So these are going to kind of be like a quick inversion. A multigram uh, relationship is always the periodic table. So I'm going to get my periodic table out, and you get yours out, and let's see if our numbers, you know, match. I'm going to use the exact numbers. If we're using the periodic table, remember, there's only one mole on the periodic table, and then the number in grams is the mass, so it's like 22.99. Okay, grams of sodium cancel out. Now we got to go from moles of sodium to moles of the other reactant. So times by a ratio, throw the moles of sodium on the bottom, 
and the moles of Cl2 go on the top. This now, a mole-to-mole relationship, is the balanced equation. That's why we had to get that equation. And it's just the coefficients, the big numbers. So for Cl2, there was no number in front. That means that there was a secret one. So for every one Cl2, you have two sodiums, because sodium is right here. Now these units cancel, and I'm over here, but I just want to see how many grams I will produce. So times, throw the moles of Cl2 on the bottom, and then the grams of Cl2 go on the top. This is a mole to gram conversion of the same compound, so that's the periodic table. And if you're using the periodic table, it's always one mole. And then whatever it is on the periodic table for chlorine, keep in mind that there's two of them. So I'm going to take 35.45 times it by 2, and I get 70.9. Okay. So now let's just do this math, right? Denominator divide if you don't want to use uh, parentheses. So any number that's in the denominator, you will divide. So I'm just going to work from left to right. I'm going to say 8 divided by 22.99, divided by 2, and then times by 70.9. So I get roughly 12 point, we'll say 12.3 grams of Cl2. Okay, so now this is how we use the chart. This is basically what we said. If we used the 8 grams of sodium, so if I use the 8 grams of sodium, I need, this number right here is an I need, I would need 12.3 grams of chlorine. Now all we have to do is we just have to compare what we have. Well, I only have 8 grams of chlorine, but technically I need, sorry, let's say that again, I have 8 grams, right? And I need 12.3 grams. If you need more than what you have, this is all going to be gone because you need like, you know, four grams, uh, roughly four grams more than what you have. So technically this will all be used up. All be used up. Do you see that guys? Since this number is bigger, you're going to use up all the eight grams. There's nothing going to be in excess. And if it's all going to be used up, it's going to be the limiting reactant. They call it sometimes the limiting reagent, but in here they say limiting reactant. So that's it. Basically, you just have to make this little chart and then just, you know, discuss what's going on here. So the limiting reactant is Cl2. And that's it, guys. Hopefully this helps. All right, let me know in the comments, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I thank you so much for that, and I'll see you in future lessons, all right? Let's keep studying hard. See you later.